Good morning, this is David from the Pace Church and just grateful that you are with us today. Uh, hope that you are well. Uh, I know it's a bit unusual for us to be doing uh, lessons this way at Pace, but with uh, the virus that's going around and off, we wanted to make sure that our folks that weren't able to get out had some Bible study material. Uh, let's start with a word of prayer and we'll get into our lesson today. Father God, we thank you for the day that you've blessed us with. We're thankful, Father, that uh, you have given us health. And we pray, Father, while this coronavirus is out and about, that uh, you watch over not just our members here at Pace, uh, but all people. Uh, Father, there's a lot of confusion, a lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty. And we pray that during this time and all times that we trust in you. Father, help us this morning as we open up your word. Uh, that we might look at it accurately and that we might apply it to our lives as we ought. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen. We are going to be looking today at the book of James, chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 8. Uh, the title of the lesson is called An Uphill Battle, Finding Joy in Times of Trial. And I think we all realize that right now is a very, very difficult time. There is so much uncertainty and uh, joy is a commodity right now that may be difficult for us to uh, secure. Uh, so we want to make four quick points this morning that might help you as you deal with some of the stress this week uh, from the coronavirus and from being uh, confined to home. Uh, in James chapter 1 verses 1 and 2, James writes and he says, James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. James begins this book by referring to himself as a slave, as a bondservant, as someone who is in a state of servitude. Uh, he doesn't talk about relationships that he has with the Lord or, or in the sense of being a, a possible family member. He doesn't talk about his role in the church. He just simply alludes to himself as a servant. And he talks about the tribes that are scattered abroad. If you go back and you look at the Old Testament story of the people of Israel, uh, they had been scattered among the nations. So in both of those words, bond servant and the idea of being scattered abroad, you have this idea that life sometimes can be tough. That when you look at your own personal history and what your role in life is and where you've been and what you're facing, life can certainly be tough. But James says to his brothers, you count it all joy when you fall into various trials. I, I know that seems almost contradictory to say you find it joyful when you're going through difficult times, when you're facing various trials, when you're facing various struggles and challenges. But James says here, in those moments, we can truly have joy. Life is challenging. It's, it's great, it's wonderful, but it is full of challenges. And as we've gone through the past few weeks and as we go through the upcoming weeks, those challenges are facing us uh, clearly. So James says, for us to remember that even though life may be difficult, it doesn't mean that we are robbed of the joy and the peace that we have in Jesus Christ. Uh, somebody said a long time ago uh, that if you're talking about being happy, that happiness changes moment to moment, just like the weather changes from moment to moment. But joy is that state in which circumstances or what people do or don't do to you. Do, do, don't it doesn't change how you feel and how you think and how you react. Joy can be a constant regardless of what the circumstances are, even when life is tough. James continues in verses 3 and 4. It says, Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. We all know that in this Christian walk, we are supposed to grow. And sometimes we grow by intense study. 
Uh, sometimes we grow by formal training, and sometimes we grow by going to the school of hard knocks. Uh, life is difficult, and sometimes our personal spiritual growth is often slow. It, it doesn't come easy. And, and that's why James says, you count it all joy when you fall into these various trials because this testing of your faith, it's what develops patience. And patience is complete or has its perfect work in making us complete by moving us towards spiritual maturity. And sometimes it's by those challenges, it's by those frustrations, it's by those difficulties that we face those challenges and learn the lessons of life. So James says, if you truly want to lack nothing, then learn the lessons that come from those difficult times. Learn how much truly you depend on God. Uh, in the midst of any situation that goes on, there's always room for lessons. I know for me personally, and I think for a lot of other folks, one of the lessons of the past couple of weeks and what we're dealing with right now with the coronavirus is just how quickly circumstances can change and just how quickly we can go from having plenty to there being scarcity. How we can go from being very casual and nonchalant about the daily routines of life, assuming that everything is going to be as it has been, to getting up the next day and uh, there are people standing in line at grocery stores and there are bare shelves. And you look at that and you realize that the one constant in our lives has to be God. He has to be the, the one that we lean on and depend on and trust in. Because if our trust is in everything staying the same, if our trust is in money or possessions or jobs or what we view sometimes as physical security, all that can change. And we need to learn those life lessons. We need to develop patience since growth is often slow, since moving toward maturity is a lifelong process, then we have to all be ready for the long haul. I think as we look at growth being slow and these struggles of life, we have to remember our God is always good. Our God is always there. And our God is always taking care of us. In verse 5 of James 1, James says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Part of this maturing process as we grow from difficult situations and learn patience, and in learning patience, we gain wisdom. And if we're lacking wisdom, we simply go to God. Our God is generous. And he will give to us liberally. He'll give to us without reproach. But we have to ask him. If you lack wisdom, if you lack understanding, if you lack that perspective of, of looking to God in all situations, our God's big enough to, to hear us say that we've got a lot of growing still to do. And God will give us what we need. We're not talking here about praying to God and all of a sudden there's going to be lots of things in your pantry at home or praying to God and all of a sudden you're going to have a wealth of money in your bank account. This is not health, wealth, and prosperity. This is understanding that perspective. This is being able to go through the valley that we're going through right now and knowing that God is walking that journey with us. And that's why verses 6 through 8 really emphasize the point that our faith in God must be anchored. He says, beginning at verse 6, But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. As we go through those tough times of life, 
and as we are slowly growing toward maturity, uh, hopefully we are learning that our God is always good and our God is always there. And in the midst of those moments when life is a struggle, our faith has to be securely anchored in God. When the world is falling apart, when difficulties come, no matter what extreme they might be, God has to be our place of refuge. He has to be our security. And when we ask God for wisdom, when we ask God for guidance and assistance, we need to do so by asking in faith, not half-heartedly, not with doubts, not with wondering if, if God is actually out there, but asking him in faith without doubting. Otherwise, we are like a ship on the sea that's being blown back and forth. We're being driven and tossed by the wind. We have no anchor in those kind of moments apart from God. So when we ask God, let's not assume that we're going to get something if we doubt. Let's assume that God wants us to be singularly focused, not double-minded, not unstable, but grounded and anchored and secure in what we believe about him. Uh, one famous uh, denominational preacher, Michael Youssef, made this statement. Only in the cross of Christ will we receive power when we are powerless. We will find strength when we are weak. We experience hope when our, uh, our situation is hopeless. Only in the cross is there peace for our troubled hearts. I think with everything that's going on in the world right now, with all the concerns, with all the uncertainties, we are pushing uphill. We are moving forward in the grace and in the strength of God. We all need wisdom. We all need to grow and to mature. And to do that, we've got to look to the cross of Jesus Christ. We've got to understand that even though there may be shortages on other things, there is no shortage of the love and the grace of God. And it is the cross of Jesus Christ that will give us peace, that will give us joy, and will give us comfort in times of struggle like this. I pray God will continue to bless you. I pray that your health remains good and that hopefully we can all be back together again soon face to face. May God bless you.